All right, everyone, welcome back to the land of Kem. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 124. And as I was preparing for today's video regarding the function of the Hill of Tara in Ireland, my research took quite the unexpected and absolutely enthralling turn, bringing me to a series of topics that have been of intense personal interest, whose time has apparently come to finally be revealed. If this is the type of content you're interested in regarding the ancient technology of a lost civilization utilizing physics and chemistry, and the function of the Egyptian pyramids and other ancient structures from across the world, this is the channel for you. So please subscribe to The Land of Kem here on YouTube. Don't forget to click that little notification bell so that you do not miss the new episodes that premiere twice per week. Please like, comment, and stay tuned if you want to help support this channel and get access to exclusive research and unreleased footage that you will not see anywhere else. Check out the members only channel and thelandofchem.com if you want to pick up a copy of the book or grab some merch. Proudly today, rocking the new Nano Gold 5th degree logo that finally made its way here to Egypt. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at the Land of Cam. Also, don't forget, after you finish watching this video, please go subscribe to our two new channels here on YouTube, Egyptian Trash Cats, for all you cat lovers out there, and Egypt Eats for food reviews. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you all so much for the support. I think that is it for today's intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. To begin, here is an aerial image of the site known as the Hill of Tara, located in County Meath, Ireland, a perplexing complex featuring a variety of different stone and earth components, starting with the causeway, here known as the quote-unquote banquet hall, a grouping of three concentric circle mounds over here, an area known as the Wrath of the Synods, here, an area where a perimeter of standing stones once existed, surrounding another earth ring structure. The large perimeter enclosure here, a passage chamber mound here, known as the Mound of the Hostages, and the dual central concentric rings here, known as the Royal Seat. And on this diagram, you can see the technical names associated with these different areas. Specifically of interest, we have the most powerful area of the site, known as the Wrath of the Synods, here, that was originally surrounded by a ring of standing stones. Unfortunately, they now have this area completely blocked off. And of course, there is a modern church built right on top of it. As we have seen with so many other ancient sites in Europe, Avebury, for example, these sites have been defaced and usurped by the Christians that built churches directly on the most powerful areas of these sites. And moving to the center of the site here, this is the dual concentric ring system. And on the center of this one, there sits an obelisk or pillar known as the Stone of Destiny. There are also six wells located at the Hill of Tara. One here, one here, 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 and here. Which are directly related to my hypothesis about the function of this structure that requires an introduction to some new concepts. Starting first with this one. Electrohydrodynamics and electrokinetics. Stated here. Electrohydrodynamics, also known as electrofluid dynamics or electrokinetics, is the study of the dynamics of electrically conducting fluid. It is the study of the motions of ionized particles or molecules and their interactions with electric fields and the surrounding fluid. In general, the phenomenon relate to the direct conversion of electrical energy into kinetic energy and vice versa. In the first instance, shaped electrostatic fields create hydrostatic pressure or motion 
in the dielectric media. When such media are fluids, a flow is produced. In the second instance, the converse takes place. A power flow of medium within a shaped electrostatic field adds energy to the system, which is picked up as a potential difference by electrodes. In such case, the structure acts as an electrical generator. Next. Regarding a device known as the fluid pump, as stated here, that fluids, and particularly dielectric fluids, may be pumped by a device which does not require moving parts. That electrical energy may be converted directly into kinetic energy in the form of moving dielectric fluids. Accordingly, this device may be employed to pump dielectric fluids such as air, oil, gases, or dielectric solids suspended in a gas through the system. These propulsive forces are brought to bear upon the dielectric fluid due to the unique geometry of the electric fields. These electric fields may be shaped in a manner to produce a propulsive force on the fluid dielectric by the geometry of the electrodes and by the manner of their orientation. Next, another relevant research paper here. Electrohydrodynamic and hydroelectric effects at the water solid interface from fundamentals to applications. Stating here, electrohydrodynamic and hydroelectric effects at the water solid interface are of fundamental importance and also underpin many important applications, ranging from the controlled liquid transport by applying an external electric field to the power generation from moving liquid. This should be sounding very familiar regarding the application of these external electric fields as described in previous episodes. Next, this review first discusses the important common foundations underpinning effects, such as electrohydrodynamic processes, such as electrically induced liquid flow. So we have two main processes of interest here. First, electrohydrodynamics that involved introducing an electric field to induce fluid flow. And the second, hydroelectrics that involve implementing flowing fluids to produce electricity. And of course, at the center of this structure here, at the Royal Sea, this image coming from a LIDAR scan featured in the documentary called The Secrets of the Stone. We have here a stone obelisk known as the Stone of Destiny. A spectacular feature of the site that is carved from white granite. And here is a stunning picture that I took of the Stone of Destiny with the sunset in the background during my recent expedition to the Hill of Tara. This was an adventure that left me absolutely speechless, and the full footage has already been released exclusively on the Members Only channel. So now, as explained in previous episodes, this obelisk was used to capture lightning strikes and direct the current into the structure and through the surrounding landscape, including the mineral-rich water in the surrounding wells. And this is where I will stop the explanation of the function of this site for now, as my research on the Hill of Tara took the most unexpected turn. So let's begin to investigate the origin of the mysterious Stone of Destiny. And you can see here, quote, there are several different and conflicting legends in Irish mythology describing how the Stone of Destiny is said to have been brought to Ireland. The Labor Gabala states that it was brought in antiquity by the semi-divine race known as the Tua de Danann. The Tua de Danann had traveled to the quote-unquote Northern Isles, where they learned many skills and magic in its four cities. Of course, we know from previous discussions that magic in the ancient world is indeed profound knowledge of physics and chemistry. From there, they traveled to Ireland, bringing with them a treasure from each city, the four legendary treasures of Ireland, including the Stone of Destiny, and the three other treasures are the Sword of Light, 
the spear of Lu, and the cauldron of the Dagda. And I discussed all four of these legendary treasures, specifically the cauldron of the Dagda and the spear of Lu, back in episode 29, the chemicals of the Tuatodonon, link in the video description below. But there is another fascinating tale about the origin of this white granite obelisk. As stated here, according to one version of Gaelic myth surrounding the Stone of Destiny, the sacred stone arrived by ship belonging to the Iberian Danan. On board was Yokade, son of a high king and a descendant of Aramon, Princess Teatefi, and the scribe Simon Brausch. Princess Thea also had in her possession an ancient harp whose origins some believe lie in the house of David. Yokade recovered the ancient stone, referring to the Stone of Destiny in Jerusalem. So it turns out that Yokate translates to horse, a direct connection to the symbolism of the white horse that I explained in episode 106 as related to cumulonimbus thunderstorm clouds and lightning, now being associated with this white granite obelisk known as the Stone of Destiny coming from Jerusalem. Which brings me to this. The Ark of the Covenant, said to house the two stone tablets of divine law given to Moses by God. And an area of the Hill of Tara known as the Wrath of the Synods, located here. Which is believed by a group known as the British Israelites to be the burial place of the Ark of the Covenant. As you can see here from the book, Tara and the Ark of the Covenant stating here that during 1899 to 1902, members of the British Israel Association of London came to County Meath to dig up the Hill of Tara. These British Israelites believed they would find buried there the Ark of the Covenant, the chest said to contain the Ten Commandments inscribed on stone tablets. So this group of British Israelites believes that during the Exodus, the Ark was taken out of Egypt and brought to Ireland. And here you can see an image showing Joshua passing the River Jordan with the Ark of the Covenant. With this group in white robes carrying the Ark of the Covenant, looking very much like what we might call the white robed Druids. And they took the Ark of the Covenant and buried it at the Hill of Tara in Ireland. So these British Israelites came to the site and began to excavate, specifically focusing on the area here known as the Wrath of the Synods. And here is a picture taken during these excavations showing a trench that was discovered within the Wrath of the Synods. And this group and their insistence that the Hill of Tara is the burial place of the Ark of the Covenant still persist to this day. As you can see here from 2018, that a new generation of British Israelites brought their Ark to the Wrath of the Synods. With all of the previous images coming from the website Voices of the Dawn in their section covering the Hill of Tara. So now, let me read you this. Coming from the book, The Land and Legends of Innisfail, stating here, from a poem called The Mounds at Tara, the Ark of God, adorned with gold, shall yet be found at Tara. The law on stone, which it doth hold, shall yet be found at Tara. Engraven there by God's own hand, and hid away at his command. Joy will reign throughout the land when they are found at Tara. And we also have here, quote, The tribe of Dan were a seafaring people, owning from Joppa. Consequently, a large number of them had immigrated to Ireland and were known as the Danites. Also here, from this time, a new era was enacted under the tribe of Dan, who are the Danites. The name of the city was changed from Lothair Crofane to Tara, 
a Hebrew word signifying the law of the two tables. And it is believed by many that the mythological gods of ancient Ireland, this mysterious race of people who possessed incredible knowledge and magic powers, the Tuatadanan, were indeed one of the lost tribes of Dan. And perhaps the Hill of Tara really means the Hill of the Two Tablets, signifying it as the burial place of the Ark of the Covenant. But what if they're looking at this the wrong way? And the Ark wasn't brought here to be buried, but it was brought to the Hill of Tara to be incorporated as an integral part of the function of the site, interacting with the lightning strikes and electric fields to be installed within the most powerful component of the complex, the Wrath of Synods. So for now, I will leave you with the greatest cliffhanger that I have presented thus far. And with your new understanding of the significance of this site, if you want to see the full hour-long footage from my recent expedition featuring the wells, the Wrath of the Synods, the Royal Seat, and the breathtaking sunset over the Stone of Destiny, come join us on the dark side. Subscribe to the Land of Kev Members Only channel and check out Episode 8 from the Hill of Tara in Ireland. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was Episode 124, The Ark of the Covenant and the Hill of Tara. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and in this week's Sunday site visit, some footage from our expedition to Ireland featuring a structure known as Dope. This is an episode you do not want to miss, so if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Land of Kevin here on YouTube. If you're interested in the ancient technology of a lost civilization, utilizing physics and chemistry, and the function of the Egyptian pyramids and other ancient structures from across the world. If you want to help support this channel and get access to exclusive research and unreleased footage, such as our expedition to the Hill of Tara or Kassar El Saga, the Palace of the Goldsmith, Come join us on the dark side at the Land of Chem members only channel. And if you want to pick up a copy of the book or grab some merch, check out thelandofchem.com, both linked in the video description below. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at the Land of Chem. Also, don't forget, after you finish watching this video, please go subscribe to our two new channels here on YouTube, Egyptian Trash Cats, for all you cat lovers out there, and Egypt Eats for food reviews. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you all so much for the support. I think that is it for today's episode, so I will see you next time. Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now.